Well, I think we left off with um, uh, we weren't talking we for were not. for I six was weeks. Pretty pissed. Well, and uh, I was going through some changes, and I would like to elaborate on those changes because I think it's vital um, in the change of whether you're a man or a woman to understand what changes are. Changes are the occurrence of of you seeing yourself in existence. It's almost like you can see um, your actions to how people respond to you. You can see how you respond to yourself. Um, again, this is about a relationship that you have with yourself that allowed you to have relationships with other people. And it's the relationship that you have with yourself that allows you to be in union with another. That is exactly correct. So when you hear the terms twin flame union, um, it is a union, but you have to have a relationship with yourself to be able to have a union. Oh, don't worry. Hers was broken too. So we're going to get to that. We'll get to that. Let's it's talk about It's a long time coming. Oh. It's way down the road. It's way down the road. So what I went through... It's um, and what changed my words is I was telling you about my dreams, but I was also telling you, um, or well, I did not even go into your voice, your voice changed, your words changed, your vocabulary changed. He was always a, he was always an alien. I call it alien. There's no other word for the language he spoke. Um, I call it, but it became more alien. He would speak and the words that came out of his mouth. A lot of people would be like, what the hell did he just say? And I would have to translate. translate. But it's gotten better. Um, but <laughs> yes, it... Well, yeah, because I say a lot of things that people can't disagree no, with. my translations I mean, got better. Your I'm language just, I'm hasn't just saying, got better. And let my ego come out what just for a moment. I say about? some things that sometimes just hit you right there in the heart. And that came from what I had to do to myself. It came from what I started to understand about what it was that I had, that I had used for selfish reason, reasons for oh, years. I mean, I literally could see an energy and I was also able to see soul signatures and never figured out what it was that I was seeing. But I could see in people when they were broken, I could see where they were hurt. I could see where they were and I would show them how to raise that up. Mm -hmm. That I used for selfish reasons. So what ended up happening was um, it was turned on me. And what I started doing um, during that time was I, I went through a metamorphosis of, of such. Um, and I, there were a lot of talks with just my mom. Um, she In wasn't spirit. there. Right. But I right. literally would, would ask a question. And then when I would hear myself say it out loud, I I'd already didn't have anybody to talk to. But what I started I doing was, back. she really wasn't coming <laughs> wasn't back. Wasn't coming back. And we can't understand why she came back. But you will. I mean, I think you all understand it, that there's an energy in this connection that just pulls you in and sucks you dry. I'm sorry. That part was like one of the channeling moments. I get it. So. <clears throat> it, they don't get it, but I don't. Trevor and Eileen might get it. Well. Alan, <laughs> Alan and Sandra get it. So we shouldn't talk about uh, people. But anyway, but um, what in, what in, <laughs> they're never going to forgive you for this. They, so, they never forgave me in the first place. So what ended up happening is I was dissecting myself. I was dissecting why I was making and saying that I wasn't love and that I could never have love and that I didn't deserve unconditional love because it was gone to me and. Then another voice would come in and say, why? Who is that talking? And where did it come from? So I had to go back to why I would make such statements. When you take the path backwards, you have to take it all the way. Don't take it to the person you're with or the, the place you were with. Take it all the way back to the point of origin when you first said it to yourself. Some people can't do that because they don't have a memory like that. But you don't have a memory like that because your ego is protecting you. So I went past ego and went into the ego and I said, okay, I don't deserve love. Why? 
And they said, well, you did all this and you, you lied and you did that. I said, okay, and let's go before then. Why did I make the choice to lie? And then the voice came back and said, well, you made the choice to lie because you were bad. You did bad things. And they said, and why did I do bad things? And the voice came back and said, well, you did bad things because you were seeking attention. You were seeking approval. You were seeking validation. punishment. You were seeking validation. So then I said, why was I seeking validation? Because you told yourself you weren't loved. When did that happen? There was silence. So I had told myself that my mother and my father didn't love me, where in fact I was telling myself a lie, which gave me permission to lie about everything else. They loved me. And then I started to generation, see the generations that had probably been passed down for them to be the way they were towards me. What had happened to them and what I was faced with. Then the shift happened. I realized that, yeah, you are a liar to your core and your core has never been touched. So let's just bring the core out. So I brought the core out and for some reason, it seemed to radiate certain energy. I was glowing. I was, I was feeling complete and utter love for myself because I didn't even know a path to do so. And by creating this path to love myself, she got sucked into the void. I was feeling it. I was feeling, I was in a dead marriage that was going downhill fast. He was very angry because he wasn't fulfilled. He was angry or you were angry? I was angry too. Of course I was. But so why are you trying to put this on him? He I'm was not, not angry by him. nature. No. You just knew how to activate his anger. Tell the truth. That's true. That is true. I did activate his anger a lot. I still do. He's over here every every Sunday for dinner. I activate his anger every Sunday. No, you don't. And, no, I don't. You but, really don't. <laughs> nice try. It's just not working for you anymore. You can't lie very well. No, but, um, you know, we just weren't married anymore. We lived together, but we just weren't married anymore. And that, I mean, it is what it is. But, Lee, um, I felt his energy. I felt it, and it was annoying the shit out of me. I can say that. It what do you mean annoying? annoying? Me. It was just annoying me. I didn't want to feel you anymore. I was tired of feeling you. I didn't want to this feel connect. you anymore. This connect. How is that possible? <laughs> okay. So, it can't happen. So, I tried to make it go away. I promise I tried to make it go away. I promise I tried to make it go away. I tried to take my medication correctly. Hoping, All seven of them. Right. Hoping that it would make it go away. It made it more more intense. It made me batshit crazy or completely depressed. And I began... You? Yeah. Batshit crazy? Yeah. You? Really? And I, <laughs> and I got insomnia again. And, you know, I, I found myself depressed and even more and more upset with him. But what I really wanted to do was pick up the phone and call him. And then there was a day when I felt him laughing. And that made me mad. <laughs> because he shouldn't be happy. Why should he be happy? We are not together. Because th Why was he happy? She just couldn't feel it. Mm, mm, mm. All right, so I sent him a message. Yes, I did. I actually sent him an email first. That said, you know, I'm. I, it started like this. I'm still pretty pissed off, but I get it. And um, there better not be any more lies because if there is, you better get them out in the reply to this email because I'm not doing this anymore. And uh, the message was so bubbly that he sent back, and that just made me even more mad. The hell! <laughs> I was like, "Hi, how are you?" Nope, all the lies are gone, and I've got no reason to lie to you about anything. I How our, are you? I she, sent oh. our friend a message. I said, is he high? Is yeah. he on drugs? Because he's getting on my nerves with this happy. And he said, no, he's just, something's happened with him. What the hell's happened? So we began to speak again. And then I got curious because the emails were coming back and forth. And then we were talking again on Messenger. And I began to get curious about this 
happiness in this because he's got that smile right there, that one you see right there. And it you can feel it, and it radiates, and it's so big, it takes up his whole face, and I love it. And um, I was wondering what the hell was up. So this is my thought process. I'm going to see him. I want to see him, so i got to come up with something. And I'm going to check to see if there's a tan mark on his finger, or if there's like an indention to see what's going on, or any of that stuff. You know how women are. And, um, so my laptop cord did break, um, and he was working retail at a your electronics lap, store. Your laptop went, your laptop went, took, it took a crap. It did take a crap. It did. But the, it took a crap. It was having trouble anyway. It was, I don't know, HP or something. I can't talk about brands on here. But anyway, yeah, I can. It's my video. It's our video. So, so I called him up and said, Hey, um, can you get me a cord for my computer? Cause it's, it's a mess. And I, you know, that's the way we talk. So I thought, sure, well, your God, he's going to get me a cord and he works in an electronic store. So sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where do you want to meet at? Now I lived on the West side of town and you got to climb a million hills to get to where I lived. And so I didn't want to, I didn't want him to have to do that. So I, um, Packed up my son in the car seat, and my daughter was with me at that time. And um, Gosh, I don't know how old she was. Maybe nine? Ten. Nine, ten? Nine, ten. It was 2009, nine. so she was nine. Nine, yeah. yeah. So um, I was excited because I hadn't seen him in months, and I my kids were there, so it was safe. She was curious. She was trying to find out if this was real <gasps> or if it was taped. Yeah, I did. I was. I'm not going to lie. I was curious. I needed to check this out. The spy woman and me needed to check it out. Did he have the same car? Did he have a ring on his finger? You know, all that stuff. I didn't have the same car. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. He had got a, he had went out and got a sports car. <laughs> just not. I got a G35. That's well, not I just a sports car. car. Okay. It's the baby to the GTR. Okay. But anyway, we'll get there. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So um, I pull up at this little ice cream shop and I wait for him. And he pulls up. And I saw his smile before he even pulled up. It was, it lit up, just like that right there. It lit up his whole face. And um, he got out of the car and he had the cord in his hand and he come up to the truck and, and he reached in and he gave me a hug. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with him? And I checked his pupils to see if they were dilated. And I nonchalant, I did. I nonchalantly checked his finger to see if there was an indention or a tan line. And uh, I asked him about his car, and we talked, and he smiled, and he laughed, and he had this glow about him, and this energy was contagious. And I didn't want to leave, but the kids were in the car, and it was safe, so there was no kissing, nothing like that, because I would have kissed him. I would have kissed him should the kids not have been in the car, really would have. Really? Oh, yeah. 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 No, no doubt. So, um, so, it was a big deal for me, so... You know, we said goodbye, and he said, "I'll, you know, I'll talk to you later." Over, I am, and I said, "Fine." So we left, and my my stomach had all these butterflies, and there was a lump in my throat, and and as soon as we pulled off, my daughter said, "Man, that that man was has a very big smile." <laughs> said, "Yes, he does. He's got a very big smile," and it was so contagious. And the whole time home. I was just giddy. I had taken that energy and I was giddy and I was laughing and I turned the music up and the kids thought I was high. And <laughs> what's wrong with you? And and she was smiling and even Cameron. Cameron was smiling. Yeah, he yeah, he was uh the two year old. Was <laughs> he was only <laughs> a year one. old. He was yeah, one. he was only but a he year was, old. Oh, who's yeah. this guy? Yeah. Look at all that energy. Yeah, he was a little over a year old and we um oh man. Wow, the energy. So then I became even more curious about what this was about. and But I knew that there was something completely different. I get home. I get, talk to our friend on AIM. You're not going to believe this. I just saw Lee, and he's not smoking crack, and he's not smoking pot. And he's just, just – <laughs> I mean, I had to go down all the illegal drugs because something had to be going on. But I, but you were fine. What the – I did. Could so something. Let's talk about what actually happened to me. 
again, I'm going to go ahead and clarify. There were no drugs involved. There was no drinking involved. I was completely intoxicated on divine energy. Yeah, you can actually be intoxicated by it. So what I felt was free. And even my words had transformed. I can't even go back to talk like how I used to talk. I can't even be smooth or 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 selfless or selfish, selfish selfish in the way that I used to talk. I understand energy so much better now. But it was almost like I was reborn in truth, into the truth, about the truth, and why it, the truth needed to be all that I could have. It was amazing. The transformation. It was. It wasn't. I, I'm telling you when I'm when I explained to you that it was night and day. It was truly night and day. What I was before was not what I was he after. You woke up. Um, and he woke up. and and being awake, um, I started really kind of spending a whole lot more time by myself. I actually asked for it. I, I didn't want. I didn't have a need to go out and, and feel the physical. Uh, uh, things that I needed to feel before. I was doing more physical things for myself. Um, I would walk, I would go down and sit at the lake, I would I would let the dreams come, I would let the voices come, and I didn't have any fear of what I was hearing anymore. And I, I started to share it freely. And then when I started sharing it freely, it would come out completely different than what I, what I had, had imagined. Um, I just knew that the shift of what happened to me happened to me for a very specific purpose. We and talked. then we talked man for a lot. A lot. And then for I, about two weeks. Yeah. And I kept telling her about my dreams and I was telling her about the lake. And then she started telling me about the lake that she was dreaming. And then we started talking about uh, some of the things that we both, you know, had endured growing up because mm -hmm. she really needed to understand how I'd come here. And then when I started telling her about the things that I went through, there was more of a shock to her system because she she needed to understand how I could justify what I was doing. And then when she started hearing the story, she realized that I had only duplicated what my parents had done. I wasn't a womanizer. I wasn't um, uh, I wasn't a cheater. I wasn't all of these things. But the life that I thought that I had to live based on the principles of everything that I lived in under the energy of what was given to me I followed a path right. and it wasn't my path. It was because I wouldn't be here with you, with her as part of our mission to help you understand relationships to yourself mm -hmm. because you have more than just one relationship to yourself. You have many. Um, and that's when we really kind of started talking about, what we knew we needed to do. And, and really, we didn't have a we name for it. We still didn't know anything about the twin flame dynamic at all. No. However, no. we were getting closer and closer and closer. And our relationship was getting deeper. And I needed another reason to see him. And we could feel everything. Right. So she ends up smashing her laptop. And I end up buying her a brand freaking new one. <sighs> but Why we'll do you look like that? Because I saw what happened to it after I bought it. I love you, Cameron. And one day when you're watching this, I'm going to ask you one simple question. Anytime you see a laptop and you start pulling the keys out of it, he it's was going too. to stop working. He was too. At some point. He um no, he did kidding. he did buy me a laptop. I love you, Cameron. He bought me a laptop yeah. and and um and we met briefly and I and I went to his work and, and picked it up. But at that point we were able to kiss in the in the truck. And he had to get back to work, so it was very brief. But this kiss was different than the mm -hmm. kiss from before that we stopped time. This kiss, I took all of my energy and put it into her, so she really had no concept of where she was and where she was going. And I had to drive home. Yes, and she missed her exit. It and was a she mess. Didn't, she didn't get home for almost 45, it was 50 a mess. minutes. What normally would have taken her maybe 20 minutes from where I were. It was a mess. Um, I couldn't drive. I couldn't think. I didn't know where I was. I it stayed in the kiss. It completely threw me off my axle. It was a mess. But that's one of the times that It was a beautiful we, mess. 
but we started to understand that there was something, something even more powerful in the energy of becoming free. And I wanted to see him more and more. So um, I wanted to, what I wanted was to see him, but I used, hey, you know that CD you made me so many years ago? Um, well, you had to go get your appendix out. Yeah, that was after the CD it. because I yeah. listened to that in the... Well, no, I remember I made sure that you had them before you had your surgery for right. your appendix. Right, you're right. Um, so um, I got sick, but I used the excuse to, I needed to, I needed a copy of that CD. But we had met at a at a restaurant at a sports bar beforehand. Uh, before I got sick, we had met and we uh, did a lot of kissing. And we well, and we actually started talking about um, the the child that had appeared in our dreams, Kaylee. And Kaylee was, if you combined me and her, I mean she was the most precious soul and, and she was calling me daddy and it was her mommy and and this was in dreams and it seemed like even in my dream state it was more real than it wasn't anything else and we wanted and when I told her about her she she described yeah, her yeah to a T to a T you told me oh, she got a little curly hair and you know almost kind of nappy and I said what, what did you say nappy it kind of but it was said, wait a minute but lie. anyway she started really describing her and, and she talked about her eyes and I said yes oh my god and with the fireplace and we started talking about the house that we were going to be in and all of this surrounding I mean it was just it was almost like we were talking about it was almost like we knew that we were in the same dream experience in the same thing. Right. And um, we could feel that this child wanted to be with us, that, mm -hmm. that this child was to be in this world. Yeah. And we, we started even dreaming about her getting older and her being public speaking. She was in changing. both of our dreams simultaneously. It was amazing. Along with our other children. Yeah. Yeah, because we we don't have any children together, but right, um, you know, it was almost like this child was a catalyst of change for the entire planet, mm, and was, we those were and we could see dreams. It. Those were so powerful, and um, so we were talking about that, and then you know there there was a lot of kissing, a lot of kissing, and then um, a lot of kissing. We met probably three or four times after that, and then. We were doing a lot of kissing, and then there was that one time. The parking lot? The parking lot. Yeah, we didn't even make it to... We got out of the car. Yeah. We got out of the car. And and and, and out in the open. Uh, it, we, I... We, we, it, we, 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 I, the sports car, that's enough. And um, it was a, yeah, I, it was... It, we, we couldn't we, help it. No, we couldn't. You all know. You understand this energy, but there was something very particular about this energy at this point because you were still awake, mm -hmm. but you were also having to live two different lives. Because there's something about that. I was still married, and he knew that Lee and I were very good friends. He knew that Lee and he I knew were where you were best friends, <laughs> right? And he knew that you know Lee and I were meeting out for drinks and and such. I wasn't being completely honest with him about the kissing in the parking lot, um, but uh, sorry, Ron. Sorry, Ron. <laughs> yeah, because he's probably gonna watch this, and <laughs> we just Listen, love you to death. I slipped and fell. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, um, you know, it. I was living two lives. I had my life with Lee, and I had my married life with my with my kids, and um, so, so this is what happened. I started feeling really sick one night and uh, really sick. So sick that I, felt it. that I called Remember? my mother and she lived 45 minutes away. But Remember, I felt it. And, and, I and he called me and said, what is wrong with you? And I said, I, I don't know. I've been throwing up all night, literally just freezing and then cold and then freezing and then cold and it got to the point where I didn't want to talk to him because I was that sick and and so, I was at home with my husband and then my mom showed up and she kept threatening to call an ambulance and I was laying in the hallway floor now here's a situation um 
because I don't want to go too far because here's a situation where I'm married and my husband and, and I and my mother were about to go to the emergency room. Now we get there and, uh, and he says, at this point, he just thought we were great friends. Um, is there any, you know, do you mean call your sister? I was like, can you at least call Lee and tell him that I'm sick and, um, and I'm in the emergency room and here goes my mom. Who's Lee? And, uh, no, you don't need to call anybody. Just no, I'm so sick. I feel like I'm going to die. I feel like I'm going to die. What I wanted was Lee there, but I didn't want him there because of a bad, it's just a, uh, no, but, um, I started absorbing, I started um, absorbing what you were going through. They finally gave me some morphine and they finally, um, took me back and found out that my appendix had bu busted and they sent me through to emergency surgery and I was crying because I really just wanted Lee to be there and I knew that he couldn't be there. It was just a bad situation. And, um, we talked, we talked after the surgery. Though. We did. I, I was, I can remember still being, I can remember asking for my cell phone. Yeah. Where's my cell phone? I can remember asking for it. And when they went, when my mom and my husband went out of the room to go get something to eat or something, I, I called you and said, <laughs> through surgery, I'm in so much pain. And, um, You were so supportive, and I can remember you crying. Because I couldn't be there. I, I wanted to mm -hmm. be, I wanted to be there. I wanted to talk to the doctor. I wanted to make sure you're okay. I wanted to. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I wanted to take over. Right. You know what I mean. I wanted to be. I wanted to be. Um, you know that that feeling you have when you're powerless and you you start to get angry, but you get so angry that you cry. Mm -hmm. um, that was pretty much what I was experiencing and I didn't know how to, um, so what I started to do when I talked to you, you said, I'm fine. I'm just going to need some rest and I just need you to be here with me. And the only thing I could think of to do was just to meditate and, and absorb whatever it was that she was going through. I didn't even know how to do that, but it was really strange. So I took some ibuprofen and, and just, because I was feeling pain, but I didn't know that it was her pain that I was feeling. I took some ibuprofen, and when I talked to her again, she's like, I feel better. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. And I didn't catch on that it was because I took something that she felt better. We, so, we didn't catch those little things back then. No, no, not at all. Mm -hmm. And um, after I did so, um, I felt... Um, I felt a relief. I, I felt that they were able to go in and do what they needed to. And I just felt really tired. Mm -hmm. So when I would sleep, it was like, I was able to be with you. I was like right there yeah, with I her. I felt in you in bed, in the hospital bed with me. I felt you there. And we stayed on the phone as much as we could yeah. without. The nurse would come in and you'd be like, okay, hold on a minute. Yeah, hang and on, the nurse is here. Yeah. And yeah. then she would talk and then yeah. I would hear and then. I would feel, I felt as though I was in that room though. I mean, even after, you know, we went to bed, I had to close my eyes and feel myself put my arms around you before mm -hmm. I could actually fall asleep. But then comes the feeling, I've got to be with him. I can't, this is horrible. What and if something happens to him? I can't do this. I've got to do something. So. So, that that's led enough. Into, well, actually, then that's comes, enough. I know, but wait a minute. I think that's enough. No, because yeah, they don't know about you coming to stay the weekends with me before you had the other. Oh, okay. Well, I did. And start that was very coming. short. That was a very short spread. Okay, I did because start after when I, after that you realized you wanted to be with me more. I did start coming. See, to she stay. was trying to stop. I was, I she was am. trying to leave y'all with nothing. Well, we See, still should. I love y'all. I'm trying to take care of you. We this still one? should. Not so much. Um, when I come out, came home and started getting better. Um, I did start coming to spend the weekend with him and then, then became a really torn up situation. Right. And we'll get into that on the next one because I was living, literally living two lives. I was living my life with Lee on the weekends and I was living my life with my children and my husband 
during the week and it became a nightmare. I was, but I didn't, I couldn't combine the two. I couldn't bring Lee into that chaotic mess. I had two teenagers and two teenage girls and a nine or 10 year old, nine year old girl. And then my baby boy. Um, and, uh, everybody knows that Mike has to go to the bathroom now. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. Um, so, and so I, it was so peaceful over here with Lee, peaceful, quiet, just lovely. I couldn't put him in, in that. And I couldn't bring him, them into, into that peace. Yeah. It was, we know Mike, we get it. You gotta go. And so Mike is wanting us to end this video. So we're going to end it there and we'll be back. You got to go to the bathroom. He's got to go outside. Are you going to go? You got to go to the bathroom. Hello? Can't hear you. He's just looking at us like I can't hear you. <laughs> Mike, tell the people you got to go to the party. Go potty. Go potty. Go potty. Yeah, yeah he does. He's busy. So, anyway, that's how we're going to end this, is Mike jumping around like a jackass, which he yeah. normally does yeah. on the daily. He's 105 pounds of loving. 10, maybe. 110. <laughs> he's just... Anyway, he keeps putting on weight, but we love him, and he's such we a do. wonderful we love part the dog of our family. Yes. Okay, so we're going to start the next video at... Um... Because it's about to get... Ugly. It's about to get ugly. Really, oh. really ugly. Remember, she's living two lives. Sorry. Which means you have to live two separate, one truth so and one lie. Sorry. Just know that it's coming. It's going to get ugly. It's about to go down. We yes. love you guys. Thank you so much for wa watching. Thanks for the wonderful comments. And, um... Hey, do one thing for us before we uh, go ahead and stop this video. Find different ways to love yourself to make your twin love you even more. Yeah. Because you can't love them if you're not loving yourself mm -hmm. greatly. Right. Bye, everybody. Peace! Peace.